afternoon, folks. Welcome to Scotland. Welcome to Prestwick International Airport here on the east, co uh, the west coast of Scotland. Uh, if you're wondering where we are, uh, just go to the north of Northern Ireland, basically, and then cut across to the east. Uh, and then you'll see the Mull of Kintyre, uh, believe it or not. We're not going to sing that, not just yet anyway. Uh, got some uh, sort of fact toys that we're going to be throwing at you um, a little bit later on. But anyway, we are here for a very, very special event. Uh, Mega Jet TV for this one time. This is something, this is, if we're going to have a bucket list here on Big Jet TV, this has to be it. Uh, of course, we had a walk around this amazing aircraft at ILA Berlin when she was static and on the ground. Uh, the guys at Antonov very kindly allowing us um, complete um, access into the aircraft. We were live on that day incidentally but uh, if you want to find out and have a look around that aircraft inside it um, then uh, just head to our YouTube channel or Facebook and just search uh, ILA Berlin or the AN225. Uh, GP could you just uh, lose that because I'm getting feedback on that. Thank you. So, uh, the AN225, folks, Antonov, uh, from the Antonov Design Bureau, face it, the biggest uh, aeroplane aircraft in the world. Uh, I think the only thing that's, uh, that, 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 that's anywhere near this in history has to be the Spruce Goose. Uh, look that up, Spruce Goose. I think it only flew once, may have flown for sort of like a mile or something like that, uh, then came back, it was a seaplane, they uh, they put her back into port and she never flew again. Uh, incredible piece of engineering. I think uh, that also um, was an aircraft that had uh, uh, um, six engines, uh, maybe even more than that, um, because it had little tiny turboprops, um, whereas this thing has got humongous um, high bypass ratio turbo fans. We'll come to that in a moment. We'll go through the whole specifications she can carry around about 250 tons this particular aircraft uh, she's all over the internet folks all you have to look up is an-225 uh, you'll see all the information look at the specs on there very very impressive in terms of everything I mean we talk about the a380 we talk about um, how impressive that aircraft is in terms of its vastness but the 225 is just a a, a lump. Also, uh, bear in mind that if you look at the back of the aircraft, it's got two vertical stabilizers either side of the horizontal stabilizers, as opposed to your normal uh, center main uh, um, uh, vertical st uh, vertical uh, stabilizer with the rudder uh, in, in the middle of a conven conventional aircraft. This one has got um, horizontal uh, vertical stabilizers either side of the horizontals, and the reason for that is because this particular aircraft was also. Um, upgraded to take the Russian variant of the Space Shuttle, um, which she did. She actually did um, uh, carry it. How many times? I'm not sure. Again, uh, Google is a wonderful place. Uh, go and check that out. Um, but uh, we'll be going over uh, specifications and so on and so forth. She's, um, she's, she's been flown all around the world currently at the moment. She's just going from one place to another. This particular flight coming from Bangor um, in, in the United States. Um, she's coming in to, uh, to Prestwick for what we call a tech stop. Um, now what that could uh, could mean it could be uh, if you if you watched the show uh, the other day that we did at East Midlands with the Volga Dnepr IL-76, um, you would have seen uh, the guy uh, the, the the mechanic that they actually take with them. These guys uh, ha actually have their own crews, uh, so the aircraft is self-reliant. Uh, all the pilots, all the, all the, all the ground crew, uh, everybody that comes with the aircraft, they don't have to rely uh, so much on uh, on on the the. Um, the handling agents uh, as you would normally get with a commercial jet um, and also of course with the freighters as well talking of freighters we do have another 747 coming in and uh, let's just get this little Ryanair 737 that's just uh, coming in from Europe uh, just to give you guys an idea of the sort of like layout that we've got here okay let's go for this okay let's just do a check let's just do a check is it not is it not no This is why, this is why, Julie, it's not working because the uh, audio, uh, <laughs> the audio 
really. I'm talking into the, uh, okay. Okay, just check your audio. Check your audio. Check, 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 check. Check, 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 check. Uh, okay, there we go, there we go. So quite a, um, So as you can see, um, this guy's obviously going to uh, roll it down to the Ryanair uh, terminal, so to speak. About four, uh, four, um, ch four services go out of here a day uh, currently at the moment um, in the early morning. Uh, thanks to Dave, by the way, for giving us all this uh, updated information as well. Um, and um, this uh, 225, the Maria uh, MR. IYA, I believe it is, uh, but will roll out full length. Um, believe me, she needs full length. Quite what she's carrying today. Uh, a lot of the times, it's very secretive in terms of uh, of what these um, what these big jets are carrying, uh, because obviously, as you can appreciate, the um, just check your audio GP. Just do an audio check. One two one two. Okay, there we go. That's good. That's good. So we have now slightly better audio than we did about five minutes ago. But uh, I will be uh, honest with you, and I would say there are probably at least uh, a thousand people, if not more, literally um, uh, circling the airfield here in terms of like positions that are uh, available for plane spotters uh, who've traveled from from far and wide like I've come 450 odd miles um, from from London uh, just to see this wonderful spectacle and uh, you guys are going to see it live I think this is possibly uh, the first time it's been filmed live uh, in action like this maybe I don't know that um, perhaps it, it has already been filmed live however uh, it's an honor for me to bring this uh, live to uh, to you folks out there and all you avid uh, uh, plane spotters av geeks uh, uh, mechanics technicians whoever you might be um, but um, we've got uh, members only comments running as we always do folks um, with our with our esteemed members here on Big Jet TV both on Facebook and on YouTube um, I will be coming to your comments quite soon soon folks uh, but let's just get a little bit of uh, information out the world uh, out of the uh, way in terms of um, uh, what we know here about um, where we are in terms of our geographical location um, unfortunately uh, it's it's out of shot but what is interesting um, is that uh, Ailsa Craig um, which is a volcanic um, granite or granite plug uh, get that folks um, and an amazing piece of uh, just a huge great big rock just off the shoreline here um, in, in um, and, and, and where we are is just if you want to find out exactly where we are uh, we're at Moncton M-O-N-C-T-O-N -O -O it's a tiny little village uh, which you can find here just just by um, just surrounding Prestwick Airfield here of course a lot of history with Prestwick Air Airfield uh, BAE systems are based here as well don't forget folks and a lot of history about BAE uh, systems uh, look them up uh, both on the civilian and the military side as well and of course uh, how can we forget uh, their, their their intense involvement in the in the Concord project as well um, just off the shore of our, as I've mentioned is um, but also just let me just tell you quickly all of the curling stones uh, that you see on the Olympics or wherever all of the curling stones believe it or not are made from and polished but out of granite which comes from that Ailsa Craig um, it's a rock basically it's not even a, a I guess you could call it an island um, but it is just a massive great big piece of rock um, millions and millions of years ago volcanic lava came up um, and and it plugged the hole and uh, that's why it is there uh, an amazing spectacle as you come over this over the top and
and uh, drive down uh, onto that amazing um, uh, coastline road, which is just fantastic. Um, of course, like I said, we've got the Mall of Kintyre, um, just off the coastline as well. I say just off the coastline, it's, it's dotted around here, some beautiful um, islands off the coast. Um, and of course, don't forget, is an interesting one, folks. Elvis Presley, the only place that Elvis Presley um, stood on UK soil was right here at Prestwick Airport when he was um, uh, 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 went into the army. Uh, apparently, they their aircraft uh, again, uh, probably on a tech stop, I'd imagine, a splash and dash from here to wherever they were going to. Um, and uh, Elvis Presley stood on the deck here uh, at Prestwick. Uh, got off, um, had a little mosey round and then got back on again. Uh, so that's an interesting little bit of uh, um, uh, news for you, or factoid as we should say. Uh, if, if you're into your golf, if you're into your golf like I am, uh, very uh, had a great little walk around Turnbury uh, earlier on and um, we've got Royal Troon and of course Presswick as well, some very famous golf courses here. Uh, Trump's golf course as well. Uh, I think it's called Trump Turnbury or um, whatever it is. But uh, anyway, it's um, it's a beautiful golf course, beautifully manicured. And uh, yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd love to play there, but it's 300 pound a round. So I think we'll be missing that for a little while. Um, Spirit Aero Systems, look them up folks. Spirit Aero Systems based here at Prestwick as well. Um, of course, uh, very, very much up on the whole engineering and technical side of aviation. Um, doing some stuff, I believe, uh, on behalf of Boeing as well. Uh, you might see in the shot, you're going to see uh, Norwegian Dreamliners dotted around here as well. Uh, as we are aware, uh, the Norwegian fleet was, uh, was hit by the Trent 1000 issues, uh, as was British Airways, Virgin Atlantic, along with many, many others, the whole of the Norwe uh, uh, New Zealand Air New Zealand fleet as well. Um, so you will see uh, a couple of um, aircraft without engines on, one particular one that hasn't got, that, that's got no engines on it at all, uh, gliders, as we call them, uh, others with the uh, mechanical moving parts of the engines missing. Um, but anyway, uh, we'll have a little look around here, and uh, we've also got a little bit later on uh, C-17 from the Qatar uh, Air Force, we believe. Uh, that's inbound as well, as well as the 225. And as well as that, we've also got, just to fill that little gap for us, um, a, car, uh, um, a Cargolux 747. Whether it's a Dash 8 or a 400, we're not sure, but that's come from Los Angeles International as well, flying almost alongside uh, the Maria. Um, and if that pilot's got any sense, he'll be getting his video camera running uh, to get some footage of that Maria, because you will see it from a long way away. So she will, um, apparently, what we're hearing is she should we got a bit of rain over there, so we better watch out for that. Uh, she may uh, take a, 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 a track across this way, so we'll see. We'll see that big wing as she comes out uh, and uh, and and checks um, her position and comes in on finals down downwind towards us. And uh, it's just just going to be a spectacular view, view, folks. And if you're um, if you're sitting there with nothing to do, then just stay here for the next few hours because we've got the arrival at around about 2:30 this afternoon and then she's uh, due to go out at around about 4.30 but we've got all the other stuff in between. Now, the other thing is as well, bear in mind, and looking at what I'm seeing here with the um, with a little generator just sitting over there, that's a kind of telltale sign that uh, she's gonna come all the way down here. She'll basically track back onto the active runway, taxi all the way down here, make a left and position herself right here. So whatever she is doing in terms of her tech stop, refueling, uh, oil check, uh, we are hearing rumors that she may be picking something up or dropping something off, we're not sure. Um, but she is, um, is it, um, she's heading out to, is it Chateau Roux or uh, Chateau Roux, um, where she will be loaded um, and then heading out to Tel Aviv. Um, speaking to our good friends at um, uh, Chapman Freeborn, um, look them up as well. Uh, they've been using the AN225 quite a lot recently. If you're looking at the kind of loads that they can put on board this amazing aircraft, um, then look away folks, because it is incredible. Uh, trains, huge generators, power units, um, engines, everything you can possibly imagine, 
massive great uh, interior to this aircraft. Um, just look it up at uh, its specifications. We'll run those past you in a little while. Um, but uh, she's another aircraft that will literally squat down on her front undercarriage uh, to open that huge nose uh, and everything goes in through the nose. It's just a, the, the kind of structures that they've built, the ramps, um, the, 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 the entire structure that they can build, they sometimes depend dependent on the freight itself sometimes they will have to build um, uh, custom fabricate an entire track system to get the freight on board the aircraft so um, you, 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 there are some amazing videos on YouTube and, uh, and everywhere else on, on, on the internet of this aircraft and what its capabilities are putting cranes on all kinds of stuff so let's get on with the show enough of me yakking on uh, and we'll uh, we'll have a little look around and I'll get some uh, comments from all of our members any second now right okay folks stand by GP it's oh it's Andy's birthday today Andy ASG Avia ASG Aviation AS, uh, yeah yeah Andy uh, yeah, yeah 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 I'll see it I'll see it in a little bit happy birthday Andy and uh, of course happy birthday and happy anniversary to anybody uh, out there who's, who's um, who's uh, having an anniversary today. Congratulations for making it far. Um, you know, it's funny actually, because I, on the radio the other day with um, uh, Stuart Marconi and, um, uh, and, his, and his sidekick, uh, they were talking about, um, instead of, uh, they, they should modernize the, um, the whole um, anniversary thing. You know, like the first anniversary is like paper, the uh, second one is a bit of glue, the third one's a piece of rubber, uh, and the 25th one's like a diamond or something like that. Why don't they make it food? You know, so you can actually, cre you know, create some food for your anniversary. Um, but anyway, uh, that's completely going off the subject here. So what we have, uh, let's just have a little look around the airfield here. Um, all the way down there. Sometimes they will park her uh, behind those sheds over there, uh, but apparently, Today we're hoping, anyway, that she's going to park, um, come all the way back down here, track all the way down here, and then uh, they're going to have to do some serious runway inspections after this thing uh, taxis past our position here. And then, um, as you can see there, that's my little telltale sign to say that she's uh, she's going to be uh, parking up is that fella over there with that generator. Um, oh, yeah, interesting. Interesting. Okay, so we've got some fuel tankers over here as well, which uh, could signify that she's going to be parked up over here or they're going to move position once she comes in. I'll just quickly make a slight adjustment here. Here's all the folks over there on the uh, on the mound, as it's called. Lots and lots of people. Wow, look at that! If you're over there and you're watching, give us a wave, folks. Anybody over there, give us a wave. <laughs> it's about a 20-second delay, so uh, keep waving, keep waving uh, when you start waving. Don't stop waving. Keep waving, uh, and we'll uh, we'll see if we can pick you out. Uh, people arriving there early this morning. We were here pretty early this morning as well, uh, just to get um, the right position. And uh, of course, uh, lots of people arriving there to get their position this morning. Um, because there's uh, 225s um, been in before, as has the, uh, the, the prototype A380. When they were doing tests uh, with the A380 uh, prototype, uh, they brought it into Presswick. Well, I think they actually did a, did fly pasts over here. Um, but anyway, uh, let's just uh, see if we can jump on a few comments here. Very long runway. It has to be, of course, for the Maria. Thousand three hundred people currently watching on Facebook. Good day, everybody. 
uh, probably um, not far off on YouTube. 3,000 on YouTube. Good day to everybody watching. Hope you're well. Hope you're having a good Sunday. Uh, we're at Prestwick, folks, in Scotland. So let's just do a quick, uh, a quick check and see, uh, see where she's at. See if I can pick her up on Plane Finder. Okay. All right. Okay, Tim Lewis, good afternoon. Uh, Don Michael, thank you for 50 stars. Elliot Reed, uh, Jane Alder, uh, 8.6 mega. Okay, 8.6 mega. Let's just have a look and see if we've got. Um, she's going to be inbound. Uh, what did you? What? What? what what's, the, what's the position, GP? Did you say north? Okay, okay. Yeah, no, it's not, it's not, it's not showing. No, no, not on plane finder. Uh, got C-17 from the US Air Force. Uh, but uh, apart from that, um, yeah, it's a shame. Um, da -da 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 -da. Let's see if I've got it. No, it's not here. Um, no, unfortunately not, no. Let me just have a little look here. So I a second. Uh, see Norwegian Air. Yeah, yeah, it's good to see uh, Norwegian Air, but unfortunately not flying, which is a great shame. Um, let's just take the filter off here, because I've still got my filter on for skip on. Uh, let's just have a look here. Northwest. Ah. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, there she is. Look at that. There's no mistake in that, is there? Ha-ha. <laughs> uh, 33, quite low, actually, interestingly enough. Only at 33,000 feet, um, which is uh, which is quite interesting to see. Um, but uh, obviously, as you can appreciate, folks, it's like, uh, it's like your... Um, it's like any aircraft, a big aircraft like this uh, on such a long-haul flight, you're burning up so much fuel, um, she's, she's going to need a fuel stop. So we are thinking that this is possibly uh, a splash and dash uh, for her to head down to France, um, but also at the, ta at the same time, an opportunity for the engineers and technicians just to make sure, give her a check up from the neck up. Uh, got six engines to check. Uh, that's why she's going to be here for a couple of hours, we believe. Um, Oh, Arif, uh, in my neck of the woods, A. Hey. Uh, good to see you, Arif. Um, <coughs> right, okay, let me just pick this up. Okay, here we go, here we go. Kennedy, good afternoon to you, Jamie Horden. We've got a Qatar Globemaster on radar. Uh, how far out is it, GP? <coughs> Mike Dinning, welcome to Big Jet TV uh, membership. She's just over Peterborough, so we have a Globemaster. She's gonna, she's gonna, she's gonna uh, land before, obviously, uh, obviously uh, before the uh, before the Maria. Uh, Jonathan Baker, 42 minutes out. Thank you very much indeed. Hey, McWiner. Uh, Yes, she's on her way to uh, Tel Aviv. Uh, she will land there tomorrow. So, Haim Wiener, um, or Vayner, uh, my apologies if I've got your name wrong there, Haim. Uh, but uh, thank you very much for the update. Uh, Carson Troy, Graham Doherty, Joseph Tempest. Um, thanks for dri driving 450 miles, Michael Kersey. That's an absolute pleasure, my friend. Um, it's an honor to bring this to you. Um, and great to be here at Presswick. We've talked about it many, many times before. We've talked about the Maria. We talked about um, her size and what she's, uh, what her capabilities. Of course, this aircraft 
if you remember, um, only only a couple of years ago, this aircraft was um, mothballed and destined for uh, destined for um, a museum piece, so to speak. But they brought it back into uh, into product in, into operation, and uh, that's the great thing that we're now seeing. Um, Ground speed 451 knots. Uh, Andy saying, uh, thank you for that, Andy. Uh, Michael Venter, uh, Kaneko Ishii, uh, Michaela Marshall, uh, Jane Alder, Christopher Kedden. Uh, thank you very much indeed, Christopher. Much appreciated. Kim Braley. I've got a cup of coffee down here, haven't I? Let's see if it's still on. Might be, might be. Oh, yeah. As possibly predicted. Okay, Plane Finder have added it. Thank you, Plane Finder. Uh, he's obviously heard me. Uh, okay, let me just check. Let me just check. Uh, I need to. Ah, uh, ooh, uh, hold on. I've got. I tell you what, I have got. I've got the uh, Cargo Lux. Oh no, that's uh, Air Atlantic. Um, the old. Um, let's just have a look here. Hold on a minute. Let me just close that. And start it up again. Kim Braley. Okay, okay, okay. Ciao very much, ciao very much. Uh, let's have a look, let's have a look. Okay, uh, still not getting it. Oh, there she is, there she is. Hey, hey, nice one, nice one, guys. Really appreciate it. Um, and that, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to Lee. At Plane Finder. Thanks, Lee. He's obviously heard me. Thank you very much indeed for adding that. Really appreciate it. Um, so uh, we're all good there. Uh, Judy Chaston, Tony Strickland. Um, again, thank you, Christopher. Um, really appreciate it. Uh, Kim Braley, having a brilliant Sunday. Thanks to Big Jet TV. Paul Andre, uh, good afternoon to you. Michael Venter. Kaneko's in the house. Good to see you here, Kaneko. Jed Kenyon. Um, Lee Pitfold. Uh, Mark Castle. Michael Kerr, 10,000 megaplane brings the viewers. Yes, indeed. I think we've got now nearly 9,300 odd uh, viewers on um, on Facebook right now. Good afternoon to everybody watching. Glad you can make it. Uh, here comes, I think, the fuel top fuel truck. So it looks like we um, we were right that this is a splash and dash. At least she's going to be fueled up. Probably need a couple of uh, couple of those. I would have thought. Oh wow, okay, cool, 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 okay, that's great. So we, well, could be one of the two, yeah, so Qatar could park over there, there's another Jenny coming out. It is one of those things that sometimes it's predicted and uh, we just don't know for sure. BP, one of the leading uh, petroleum companies using uh, biofuels, actually um, working very closely with a number of different uh, airlines and uh, engine manufacturers uh, to uh, increase the efficiency and cleanliness of flying by introducing biofuels. I think they're, uh, BP are one of the leading uh, petroleum companies involved with, um, with that, those particular projects, which is great to see. I'm all for it myself. Um, and of course you can see from the uh, dedication of airlines and engine manufacturers around the world um, how much effort they're putting into uh, increasing not only the efficiency but the cleanliness of how their engines run um, decreasing um, all the nasty stuff that we used to see back in the old days there's our uh, generator being powered by uh, postman pat You don't need a sodding great big thing that's going to be burning a load of fuel and diesel. Uh, so yes, most definitely. Uh, the fuel truck is sitting there. Lots of people dotting themselves around the airfield.
so it's interesting that they've got another jenny coming over so maybe um maybe it's so big it needs two ground power units people watching. Alan Windley, thank you very much indeed. Jane Alder, Paul Chalmers, uh, Darren Graham, Lee Burnett, Loopy is in the house. Ross Kennedy, uh, Jonathan Fletcher, good afternoon. Ness Fullerton, thank you for the stars, Ness. Uh, Stephen Hansbury, Alfredo, Mark, Martin Del Campo is watching. Hello to you um, and hello Kaneko. John Hucklesby, Damien Layton jumping over now onto YouTube. Thank you very much indeed. Mandy D, thanks for this, Jerry. Get yourself a coffee on the way back. I will indeed. Thank you so much, Mandy D. Big shout out to Dave D, by the way. Um, really appreciate your help, Dave. Uh, Phoebe Stern, Reese H, good afternoon to you. Ben Brown, Michael K, um, Alan Susoma, uh, my apologies if I've got your name wrong there, um, and uh, Gray Phillips, Max Woodman. Uh, ben R, Paul Skilling, um, Craig Turner got a message from Paul saying that apparently um, dual runway operations back uh, in the house at London Heathrow, uh, something which is uh, it's interesting. It's a little bit concerning because obviously you know that will sort of like water down the uh, the amount of movements that we're going to have uh, as we had with the uh, with the with the single runway operations. Uh, Lee Armstrong, not far away now. Thank you very much indeed, Lee. Um, got a little mention there. Stevie McGuinness, five bucks. Thank you very much indeed, Steve. Uh, we're going to keep going, my friend. Don't you worry about it. We've got a new member. Uh, Kirsty Finch, good afternoon. Welcome to Big Jet TV. Sam Milet asking for an ETA. Around about 20 minutes, uh, Sam. Uh, Ian McDermott, good afternoon to you. No? Okay, now, now now we're saying around about 35 minutes, uh, apparently. Thank you very much indeed for the update. Silver Fox, good afternoon to you. PG's Aviation and Travel, good afternoon. Uh, Travel Man 101, of course, big shout-out to Chili Presswood, who is your live stream um, a technician for the day. Uh, well, she's always a live stream technician. <laughs> but anyway, Caroline Blair, thank you very much indeed, number one fan. Good afternoon to you. Uh, Child Council, uh, are those sheep in the background? Uh, very possibly, yes, indeed, they are sheep. Look, 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 on the bank, look. Amazing, incredible, uh, no, they're cows. <laughs> uh, but anyway, there we go. Um, but uh, yes, look at the crowds, man. Look at the crowds. I hope you're social distancing, folks. Um, keep that, I know we're outdoors and all that sort of thing, but uh, uh, try and uh, be sensible and stay socially distanced, obviously, because uh, we care about you. And uh, we don't want to see uh, our beautiful country back in lockdown again. Um, because of your responsible behaviour. Uh, but here we go, look at these guys all the way out there as well. There's more people uh, out there in the fields. Look at all the cars parked up down here. I do know uh, to the back of me, I've got lots and lots of people as well. The local streets uh, around here are absolutely ramo. Uh, it just goes to show uh, this brings out uh, everybody uh, it, the, the kids will love this as well, man. I mean, imagine going back to school in September and doing a doing a project on uh, on on uh, the uh, seeing the AN two two five Maria. Um, so let's just have a little look. Noel Fitzgerald, thank you very much indeed. Um, Leah Rapper uh, Rapper Rapperport, uh, good afternoon and welcome to Big Jet TV. Uh, great to see you here, folks. Thank you for all the stars, folks. Keith. Uh, Kath Murray uh, tuning in from Brisbane, Australia, wishing all the good people out there in Victoria as well um, uh, the best of luck because obviously uh, terrible things happening out there. Uh, hope you get uh, everything back to normal or as, 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 as close to normal as you possibly can uh, as quickly as possible. Um, unfortunately going into another six week lockdown out there. Uh, Elliot Reed, Michael Kerr, good afternoon to you. Um, Karen Shepherd, Yvonne Heelan, uh, Noel Phillips, good afternoon to you, my friend. Uh, Reese H. G. N. Man, architect design. It's a super Sunday. Stand by. <laughs> Just brought the trumpet out. Uh, Reese H. Chris Scapaloo, uh, Sam Milet. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm gonna
your sound. Okay, Architect Design, good afternoon to you. Wendy Scogland, good afternoon. So excited, Yvonne Healan, uh, Karen Shepherd, John North, uh, Ali Leyland, yeah, great to have you all with us, folks. Um, let's just check her position. Uh, got more members coming in here uh, as well. Uh, good afternoon to you, John. Welcome to Economy, John. Uh, of course, uh, members here on Big Jet TV, uh, feel free to come in and uh, give us your comments. Caroline Blair, thank you very much indeed. Chicky Armitage, good afternoon to you. Portugal Holiday Villas, good afternoon. Daniel Morgan, uh, Lee Smythe. Lady Thunderbird 6, good afternoon, Jerry and all uh, Stevie Luscombe, uh, Curtis Barley, welcome to Executive Kirsty. Uh, Curtis, sorry, my apologies, Joe Thompson, Sabira, thank you very much indeed. Gordon McLeod, Acorn Revival, uh, do they get BP rewards on <laughs> Champion? Uh, yeah, about a million, I think. Um, what was it the other day we said that it would take two weeks uh, at your average fuel pump? to fill up an A380 uh, <laughs> with your average uh, at the car fuel pump. Uh, crazy man. Uh, let's fly away. Um, Phoebe Stern. Yeah, that is um, that is Noel Phillips. Um, uh, the Noel Phillips. Good afternoon to you, Noel. Uh, Noel. Uh, Carl Mason. This is going to be epic. Well, I'll tell you what, it's going to be even more epic, folks. The fact that um, the, the, what we're looking at here is that position is going to be right there. She's going to be hopefully parked right in front of us um, whilst she's on her tech stop. And then what is the most incredible thing? If you go away, for God's sake, make sure you come back because seeing her uh, sit there with all six engines running at full power, like black smoke coming out the back. I know we're talking about like, you know, cleanliness and all that sort of thing, but don't forget, these are big old, um, big old engines uh, that, uh, that, that, that need a lot of power to get this thing moving. Uh, so what the uh, pilots will do is they will step on the brake run the engines up to full power and then literally almost like letting off the handbrake like bang uh, and then she's gone straight down the runway uh, she'll come past us at what will appear to be no speed at all uh, and she will literally use the entire length of the runway very very exciting um, so uh, that's that Daz Landles thank you very much indeed Leslie Pike Glass Engraver Nick Gratton GN Mann uh, Keith Cornell, Stephen Owens, Paul Skilling, good afternoon to you, Alex Frost, uh, good afternoon to you, you're just outside my hometown in Kilmarnock, good afternoon to you, um, Alex Frost, beautiful countryside around here folks, I love the, the history of Scotland um, and some of the uh, old uh, architecture around here, of course uh, there's an old railway line that used to run down into, um, in, in, into, um, the, into Turnbury, uh, that was of course ripped up in 1966 when old Maney came along and abolished all the railways. Uh, good for him, uh, not really. Um, but uh, Gary C, good afternoon to you. Welcome to Big Jet TV. Bradley Penny Aviation, um, Alby, uh, David Bisbee, Tony Austin, Joe Hall, uh, Dr. Dave's Ents Liverpool, um, Bruce Rosberg. Um, now, uh, how much fuel? Uh, let's just have a little look here and, uh, and get, some, get some specifications and the in to do that. Uh, she has a capability of carrying 250 tonnes. Now, of course, uh, how much fuel they put on this aircraft, along with uh, how much her takeoff run is, will sort of like give us an indication as to uh, whether she's uh, carrying an immense amount of weight. Uh, but we will, uh, we will look at that and we'll find it out. Um, let's just have a look at this. E -M uh, da -da 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 -da. Okay, well, I'm gonna read it, I'm gonna read it, I'm gonna read it straight off of the, uh, the, the, the Wikipedia page because really folks, at the end of the day, Wikipedia is a great place, great source of information, which we all, oh, look at that, that's quite interesting. Uh, there is another runway here as well, a, um, an intersecting runway they use for the light aircraft. And the runway that that, uh, that aircraft is landing on was actually the runway that they used to park the, um, the, uh, the Virgin A346s up on, or store them, way easy, son. Um, but yes, 
Yes, that's uh, if, uh, a lot. Of, a lot of ab geeks will remember uh, that that's the position where they uh, parked up the uh, the A three forty sixes, which are now still in service in terms of being utilised for PPE flights. And this Antonov AN two two five, believe it or not, folks, was also has all also been used for humanitarian uh, aid as well. Uh, one in, one in particular that I saw uh, a few weeks back was. Um, uh, her full of PPE boxes. Can you imagine how long it took to offload however many thousands of uh, boxes of PPE? Uh, they did it and uh, fair play to them. Uh, she's a strategic airlift cargo aircraft designed by the Antonov Design Bureau in the Ukrainian uh, SSR within the Soviet Union during the 1980s. Powered by six turbofan engines the heaviest aircraft ever built with a maximum takeoff weight, get this, 640 tons. Um, so she may be, uh, she may be uh, being um, uh, loaded up with maybe a, 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 a hundred, hundred tons of fuel perhaps. Uh, we don't know at this moment in time, but uh, we'll so, certainly get an idea um, from uh, from when we see the, the, the fuel, the fuel, uh, Bowser uh, start fueling her up. Um, unit cost 250 million. Number built, only the one. Of course, don't forget, folks, the two big bumps or the big, the big humps that you'll see in the um, in the in the middle of the aircraft above the wing are where they hooked up the um, the Russian equivalent of the space shuttle. Um, so. Um, Obviously, all these. Uh, now, the other thing is, of course, is that um, there is a. We, we, we're not 100% sure on why the Cargo Lux is coming in, but uh, there is a GE facility, General Electric Engine facility, uh, relatively close by here uh, at Presswick. So uh, it, it's a possibility that it may be engines coming off of this 747. Of course, uh, a big project going on here with these uh, Trent engines being refitted. We've got two uh, Norwegian uh, red noses there. We've got a couple over there, which we can see as well, uh, dotted around the airfield. And of course, we've, as we've seen, is this, um, is this uh, couple over here, which is a great shame to see. Uh, that one there, a glider completely. Uh, of course, a no Norwegian, another airline that was uh, slated for um, for bankruptcy uh, a while back, but we have heard, of course, uh, information that uh, that that may not be the case anymore. That they may have had a rescue package uh, from the Canadian government, of course, uh, owned by the Canadians, uh, Norwegian. Uh, sorry, by by Norway. <laughs> yeah, same place, isn't it? <laughs> right. Let's just have a look. I'll get me code. Um, a wingspan, 290 feet, right, 290 feet. What's that, what's that, what's that? Okay, we've got somebody on, uh, is it YouTube? whose friend's father is a captain on one of the Ryanairs that's going out at around about 2.50 this afternoon. So we'll definitely get that. Don't you worry about that. Phoebe Stern, AN225, about 15 minutes out. Um, Max Woodman, what's happening to that Dreamline Norwegian? Uh, engines, Max, uh, they are having their engines replaced or uh, removed and then sent off for fixing uh, or, or revisions or... Um, new parts that have needed to be done inside the I think it's the it may be even the high pressure or low pressure turbine uh, blades inside the engines that started to crack um, or showed signs of cracking when they when they put the, um, the, the, the boroscopes inside the engines to inspect them um, Daniel Edwards, good afternoon to you. Um, welcome to Big Jet TV. Awesome job getting up to Presswick after Toulouse. Geraint Noddy Lewis saying thank you very much indeed. Had to be done, folks. It had to be done. You know, um, 
that just goes to show our commitment here on Big Jet TV to all Av geeks around the world. Um, it's it's a, it's one on the bucket list for, for all of us, I think. And uh, I think this is the biggest that you can, you can't, I mean, how are we gonna beat this? I just do not know, but we'll just carry on doing what we do because we love it. Uh, Bill Kerman, good afternoon to you. 12,000 on Facebook. Peter Lowe, good afternoon. Uh, you're in Scotland, indeed I am. Uh, Mark Anderson. Uh, wow, oh, interesting, interesting factoid. F -f 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 factoid coming from Ben Brown. The Norwegian outside the hangar on the other side of the runway has never flown a commercial flight for Norwegian since being delivered here over a year ago. Wow. Obviously, uh, finding that out on the um, on the uh, one of the uh, sites, I'd imagine. But uh, yes, look at that! Isn't that incredible? Uh, he's got the he's got the best spot in the house, isn't he? Eh? That's what we need at Heathrow, isn't it? <laughs> You know why? I, I was. I, it doesn't surprise me because I. I oh, okay, that's got the. Uh, Zul Solar. Is that Argentinian artist? Okay, he's an artist. Sorry. <laughs> um, so what's first in? What's first in? Is it the C17? Is it the C17? Uh, I just want to say a big shout out to David A. Um, here in Scotland, hope you're well, um, my friend. Taking a walk, Mark Anderson and uh, yeah, Mark uh, Mark Anderson Air Canada will be objecting to bailing out Norwegian. <laughs> Ian McDermott, uh, Chris played Mad Web once visited Cessna factory in Reims, France. It was awesome. Judy Chaston. Um, yeah, when did Canada buy Norwegian? <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, why was I thinking that? Why was I thinking? I don't know, I don't know. But anyway, at F, good afternoon. J, J F Bryson. Um, yeah, so the wingspan is nearly 100 metres, as long as an, an, an athletics 100 metre track. That's incredible, isn't it? Uh, Alfie Tate, uh, interesting looking plane. Um, Alison Thornton, thank you very much indeed. Mitchell O'Shea. Um, Michael Kerr, love the cows on the back of those Trent 1000s. Yeah, I mean, um, I was very fortunate enough, and I have been fortunate enough to be airside with Cargo Logic a, num a number of times, um, and uh, walked up and literally touched the back of the cows on those, uh, on those, they are carbon, they're all carbon, and those cows are around about 10, millim 10 millimeters thick as well, which is just incredible, man. Um, and, and if you would have seen Kate, uh, who's a who's a um, a YouTuber uh, as well as a, a great photographer out there in the United States, she she does a lot of photography at Payne Field for Boeing. Uh, recently shot one of the 747-8s with the unpainted um, cows on the Gen X engines because, of course, uh, these are Rolls-Royce Trent 1000s, um, but the Gen X engine almost well it is identical. Also has those um, those cows, so um, scalloped cows, so to speak. Uh, so another, um, I am I am thinking that most definitely this is where the AN225 is going to park over the other side here, um, just based on the amount of uh, traffic that's going on here. Uh, another fuel bowser on its way out. What have we got? Can we get a uh, look at the crowds, man? Look at the crowds. It's crazy, man. Wow. Okay, what was that? What was that? Who? Who? Daz Landall. Sorry, Daz. I didn't see you. Sorry, mate. Well, I've got a bit of my... Yeah, yeah. Sorry, Daz. Let me just find him. 
Uh, Rupert Craig, good afternoon to you. Let me just find Daz. Daz Landall, my apologies, mate. I missed you. Um, whoa, whoa, hold well on a minute. I've got a low battery mode on. Uh, low power reading on that. Uh, let me just put that, put that on there. Back on there. Okay, we're back on there. Um, Camera nice. Yes, the uh, AN225 is bigger than the C5 Galaxy. Um, quite a lot bigger as it happens. Um, but uh, yes, is the answer to that. So quite how much this uh, 40 foot um, Bowser can carry in terms of fuel, but uh, looks to me like a, they're gonna be uh, loading this 225 up with a serious amount of fuel. So her fuel bone rate is obviously quite considerable. So it's most definitely a splash and dash and we might even see the uh, engine cowls being opened up just to double check the... Okay, the C17 with the Qatar, is it Qatar Air Force? Is gonna be coming in first, thank you very much indeedy. Maybe it will. I don't think there's enough space over there for a 100 metre wingspan six engine jet, to be honest with you. Over the other side, that is. Uh, Barrington Christian, good afternoon to you. Um, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, oh, is that him there? Uh, oh, just see if I can find Rupert. Good afternoon to you. Um, Always a great shame when I miss someone's name, you know, uh, my apologies to you, Ian Bramley. Uh, good afternoon to you, Paul Rosser, Daniel Edwards, Mark Sanderson, Marion Lenescu, Kate Brisley, Q-E-A-F, it's getting closer as well as the AN225. C17 should be first, but not by much, Ian Livesey saying. Uh, Kenneth Story, Andrew Austin, good afternoon to you. Ever heard of a 747 Dream? Yes, uh, Andrew. Um, uh, yeah, Andrew. The um, the the Starlifter. Uh, sorry, the Dreamlifter is is most definitely still in service, um, operational, obviously for Boeing uh, manufacturing, uh, much like the Beluga. Um, I'll be honest with you, the Beluga is a much more sort of like you know, it's it's a bit sleeker in terms of its looks. Dreamlifter is a bit of a sort of like, you know, it looks like it's got a wart, you know, it's got a bit of a, um, uh, a um, uh, uh, some kind of a um, um, malfunction <laughs> in terms of what it looks like, because it looks like it's just had a big tube bolted in the middle of it uh, from the front and the back, but anyway, um, uh, obviously does its job, uh, and uh, yes, indeed, Andrew, it is still operational. 20,000 have we got? What's that? 20,000? Kenneth Story saying. Um, Ian McDermott, yes, indeed. Costs a lot of money for all that. Well, there's Rav H. Good afternoon, Rav H. X614. Scott Tarpley. Uh, Gareth Davis, oh, 20,000 feet AN225. Thank you very much indeed. Daniel Morgan. Uh, go left of the Jerry Coast Guard helicopter over there. Yes, we've got him over there. Um, I think they just wheeled him out, actually, to be honest with you. Um, we might see him operational, we don't know yet. Oh, it's a bit of rain. We've got a bit of rain, ladies and gents. Uh, too bad, but obviously it's not uh, it's not ideal. Uh, Max Woodman, uh, Maria is due in in about 15 minutes. Oh, 
Wow, Nigel cleaning, not sure about the 225, but the 124 burns around four, four, um, uh, 14 tons an hour. It's incredible, isn't it? Um, well, if the 124, uh, if, the, if, if the 14 burns, if, if, the, if the 124 burns 14 tons an hour, um, then that's, uh, So that's uh, about three odd tons, a uh, 3.5 tons per hour uh, per engine. So it's about 21 tons an hour probably from Maria, I would have thought, somewhere around about that point. But obviously uh, different engines on the Maria as well. So let's see, Gaz W. Uh, Peter Lowe is just flying over Campbelltown. Uh, Rab H, no, you're not missing it. Taft Bowman, good afternoon to you. Noah Hart, uh, Andrew Smith, then do build the dragon. Uh, Daz Landles again, could you give a big shout out to the Downwind Discord aviation server watching with me? Uh, good afternoon, Daz Landles and the Downwind Discord aviation server. Okay, good afternoon to you, Jane Berry, Tony Hall. Uh, Daz, you didn't need to uh, throw 10 quid in the pot there, my friend. Uh, just, um, I just missed your comment. I'm very much appreciated anyway. Uh, that will go straight in the bud travel budget, as you know. Uh, 13 minutes away, uh, Tony Hill, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Jordan Weir, looking forward to this. Uh, C17, 17, 17 minutes out, Paul Ross is saying. Uh, Keith in Miami, good afternoon to you, George Norman. Uh, who else have we got? Uh, Dean Hanley, 35 miles away. Alfie Tate. Uh, crazy numbers. Yeah, uh, obviously people looking up uh, the the um, the, the uh, specifications. They're just so uh, impressive uh, on the 225. Uh, guys, make sure if you've got the opportunity, if you've got the capability, give your friends a call, give them a text, uh, share it with your friends. Uh, don't forget to um, subscribe to Big Jet TV and also download the app, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to uh, stay with the live aviation here on Big Jet TV. Uh, always never miss a moment of live action here on Big Jet TV uh, by downloading the app. It's very easy indeed. Just go to Big Jet TV Live on your uh, on your on your app store. Uh, it's free of charge, and of course, there's no in-store um, purchases either. Get in here, 12 minutes, Bogman. Uh, Leon Bogman, sorry, Andy, Adrian, MG53, good afternoon to you. So, uh, hello. Local constabulary by the looks of it. Coming in to have a nose. She's just about to touch flying over Turnbury now. Yeah, yeah, we've got her. I've got the C17 first. Here she comes now. Yeah. So, wow. 
police are uh, definitely here to check it out. That's pretty cool. What's, what's her altitude at the moment, DP? That's probably something heading to Heathrow, isn't it? That, what I'm looking at there. That's military, isn't it? That's an A... That's a C-17 as well, isn't it? That's a C-17 as well, isn't it? By the looks of it. Yeah. Cool. What's her, what's her altitude? Sorry, GP. What's the altitude? Okay, gear down on this one. No, 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 no. The, um, the, the Antonov, yeah. Watch this, folks. This is a bonus, because we weren't expecting this when we... Um... Oh, is it? That's going to Ramstein, is it? Haha, <laughs> cool. Oh, from Ramstein.
this the uh, is this the guy whose friend's dad is flying this Ryanair 737? Okay. Is he captain or a?
you think? Is it alright at the moment? Is it okay? It's stable. Is it stable? Right. Okay, stand by. So I'm looking for port one, which is looking for port one, which is three, in it. Stand by. Sit down here. Sit in. I don't know. It has. No, it's all come back on again. It's all come back on again. So port one. She's moving. It's not having it though, is it? Sorry about the glitching folks, as you can appreciate a uh, significant amount of data traffic uh, being demanded here. Uh, and us, like everybody else who are using their phones and so on and so forth, um, there will be a certain amount of glitching on big events like this where there is a lot of people here. Uh,
This is going to be so impressive. There you go.
that, ladies and gentlemen, is a mega jet. back on again. So I'll take the take the time out of the Wi-Fi hotspot in the jig. Get that back on line again. Uh, double up on Facebook and YouTube on my phone. Simple as that. Looks in curious stir. <laughs> that is that for that. And that is the end of the day. Back in his nice warm truck. Okay, we have apparently 40 tons, 40 tons of fuel going on board this aircraft, folks. Um, which doesn't seem a lot, to be honest with you, the big mega jet like that. But there, uh, again, when you consider, I remember being at London Stansted and they were loading up uh, for Atlanta a Boeing 747 with 100 tons of fuel to go all the way to Atlanta. This thing's only going to France, and he's he's going to burn 40 tons, um, which is probably he's probably not going to um, utilise all of those uh, jobs because they have to have a, a certain amount of uh, fuel in reserve. You know, should the situation raise where they have to um, uh, circle the airfield or do go around and sit on and sit on. Okay, so there you go. My one, that one pops in there like that, full pressure. And that jabbly. So, what is uh, interesting is obviously, as you can appreciate, normal situation with refueling a commercial aircraft. Um, they will use sometimes a scissor lift. Um, they'll use a scissorless lift system. I'd imagine that they would probably have to do that here with the 225. However, we might be learning something new today in terms of um, how they fuel up a 225. So hope you all enjoyed that. Sorry once again for the glitching, folks, but that was just a uh, an anomaly that norm that, that does sometimes happen from time to time when we're uh, in a situation where there's a lot of data uh, demand. There's a lot of demand on data, um, which is uh, exactly precisely what happened. Okay, uh, let me just check. I've got. Uh, that is powered up there. Cheers now. So whilst we keep an eye on that, just have a little look. Uh, we've got cargo up 747, 25 minutes out. Uh, sure what's uh, going on with this fella over here but uh, I think he's just come in isn't he I thought. okay so the crew are now disembarking uh, of course, as we've uh, discussed in the past, uh, all self 
self-sufficient or self-reliant. They won't rely on any of the ground teams other than uh, the guy who's literally driving up now with the uh, ground power unit, the GPU. Um, we'll keep an eye on that as well. Architect Design, thank you my friend. No need to, but thank you anyway, really appreciate it. Uh, let's just uh, read some comments out from you wonderful people out there. Hope you're all enjoying this. Live. Make a jet TV, love it. Okay, so that's the ground power unit now. Um, It's like slow mode, isn't it, with the uh, frames per second? ground power unit is uh, located um, just aft of the undercarriage bay, I believe. Um, IL-76 is certainly uh, located in, in, in that sort of area. Uh, the AM-124 is also uh, located uh, aft of there. Um, normal uh, auxiliary power units, the APU, um, is uh, normally situated in the back of uh, your average commercial jetliner, which we've seen and discussed many times before. Must be a great experience for these guys on the ground as well, who work at Presswick, so used to working with 737s, Cessnas, small aircraft, the odd military jet every now and then that comes in, but in general, uh, must be a great um, experience for them and an honor as well to be, uh, just to get underneath this mega jet. Certainly is an honor for us as well. Uh, however, I think, um, I think these guys actually are maybe crew. Uh, Antonov crew uh, and therefore in that case will be um, arranging everything there uh, thank you architect much appreciated um, so they'll be coordinating uh, the movements any movements around the aircraft I'd imagine um, of course we do have uh, a number of uh, ground teams around the aircraft so I don't think she's uh, I don't think she's I don't think she's loading anything today so that being the case um, there won't need won't be any need for any uh, uh, Team representatives or uh, charter representatives or brokers, uh, sort of people that you normally see around the aircraft who are organising uh, shipments and so on and so forth, dealing with all the logistics, you know, your uh, Kunagals of this world, all those guys that. Um, Um, Chapman, Freeborn, etc., etc. Uh, all those guys, charter companies that are responsible for uh, getting these things, getting these shipments moved around the world. 
whether they be um, pieces of engineering, uh, arc, you know, um, generators, uh, even a train. I remember seeing uh, a short while ago, seeing a train being uh, loaded into this great big aircraft, um, literally eating it um, like a tube train type of thing, going out to Japan, I think it was. Yes, indeed, Scott, they do look like little dinky toys. Uh, Gordon Farmer asking for a big shout out to the Coast Guard and the search and rescue for their services. Yes, of course. Um, those folks working um, tirelessly around the clock. A lot of them volunteers as well, don't forget. So unlikely we're going to see the nose opening today. Yo, yo, mate. Thank you for today's show presenting. And Jilly on the keyboards. And on bass. Do, 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 do. And on drums. <sighs> Philip Lee wants one. Karen Corcoran, she is indeed. Uh, Rab H, uh, Mario Petrella. Even the fuel truck looks tiny. Yeah, I mean, that's a 40 foot long uh, fuel truck, folks. Even the, uh, that's one of the flight crew, I think. Yeah, I think that's one of the flight crew. So those engines are, uh, let me just turn this off, hold on a second, Wi-Fi, oh. Those engines are um, the ZMKB Progress Lotarev D18T turbofans. Um, each of those engines producing 52,000 pounds of thrust or thereabouts. Um, wow, 52,000 pounds of thrust. For us, ladies and gentlemen, so you have 312,000 pounds of thrust uh, available uh, on that aircraft, which is just incredible. But you probably blooming well need it um, with, um, with with the amount of weight that she can carry. Obviously, not utilising all of that thrust, um, but as you can see there. That's the anchor points for the Russian space uh, shuttle uh, variant of the space shuttle. They're the anchor points and the reason for the large um, horizontal stabilizers, um, a vertical stabilizer, sorry, um, on the back of the aircraft, uh, instead of the center stabilizer with a rudder, um, she utilizes those dual um, stabilizers and rudders uh, purely because if, uh, if she was carrying um, something on the aircraft, then obviously it would upset the airflow going to the uh, rudder. So they obviously have to utilize um, the rudders either side so that they get a clean airflow um, and therefore obviously able to control the bleeding thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, incredible, incredible aircraft. That arrow pointing to one of the hatches up at the top uh, in case of ditching and so on and so forth. I think uh, it's an emergency hatch, one of possibly two. In fact, we've got one aft of the wing as well. I think the um, Antonov AN-225 also has an upper deck capability of carrying passengers as well. Not so much passengers, but personnel, if needed. Uh, you can just about see the um, you can just about see the crease. Uh, well, not the crease, but the uh, where the nose hinges, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Um, just running the camera down there, you can see that's the um, the hinge point of the nose. 
uh, when she does open the nose she'll squat down on the floor those that front undercarriage will literally fold up underneath the aircraft and uh, allow it to uh, drop down onto the floor in order to um, uh, have the access ramp closer to the floor the front of the aircraft closer to the floor so that she can obviously um, load her, uh, her goods The Ross saying too bad there's no passenger version. The entire population of the Netherlands would probably fit in there. Hey, hey. the Bash Mode AN225 built to transport Buran. Buran flew one test flight and was abandoned. There we go. Uh, Buran, the um, the um, the uh, uh, Russian or um, Ukrainian, should we say, possible Russian equivalent of the uh, the space shuttle program. And yes, indeed, flew once and then was abandoned. Only one of these uh, aircraft manufactured, of course, Cargill up, 747, just over the Isle of Arran, 17 minutes out, Calvin Grant. That's to our, um, that's right behind me, literally, I think we were called Dave telling me earlier on that uh, that is the Isle of Arran, I'm right, it's so, uh, Very fortunate with the weather, hasn't been too bit bad at all. Twelve thousand five hundred horsepower per engine. Um, amazing when you think, you know, you think about twelve thousand five hundred horsepower each engine. I think it's, uh, yeah, um, you know, there is a there is a, um, uh, a, 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 a equivalent of like a, you know, how do you calculate horsepower versus um, thrust? You know, pounds of thrust. Uh, there is a calculation. Um, it's, it's a bit of a sort of like an, uh, uh, an unknown. It isn't like there's an official uh, sort of calculation, but um, it, there is a, a, a number that you can kind of get to. But what is amazing, um, just in terms of motorsport, there is that the, you know um, the average um, top fuel dragster uh, has as much power in it. Uh, I think the top fuel dragsters are now uh, over 10,000 horsepower, which is just uh, insane when you think about it. Um, but there you go. Oh, Craig B. Buran was destroyed in a hangar collapse in 2002. Uh, remember that this particular aircraft, folks, was mothballed for quite some time before, um, before being um, having a resurgence uh, nothing to do with COVID-19. It was just that uh, I think that Antonov had a have a, had a contract or an agreement with um, one of the um, uh, 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 another company um, who who escapes my my memory. But um, and they can they subsequently cancelled that agreement. And now Antonov, uh, the company, uh, utilise the um, do, do all of the uh, organisation and the logistics uh, of the aircraft. Um, so, you know, uh, perhaps that's why they basically turned around to these guys and said, look, you're not working hard enough. Uh, we're going to take it on ourselves. And that's why it's um, it's now been um, been uh, been utilized a lot more. Uh, Alison Baker, thank you very much indeed. Phil Sky, good afternoon to you. Mark Anderson, Soviet shuttle, Buran, snowstorm as it was low. J.F. Bryson. Uh, Amanda Klisorova, uh, Buran is blizzard in Russian. Okay, there we go. Um, kind of the same snowstorm. Uh, snowstorm is a blizzard, isn't it? Okay. just over air. Okay, we'll just... Um... Uh, Ian McDermott, yes, indeed, I wonder what she is uh, carrying. Uh, 
you can never tell whether these huge aircraft are actually heavy or light, uh, to be honest. It is just one of those things that because they're so vast and because they obviously have a, a, a tremendous amount of um, undercarriage, uh, I think um, I think the fueling, the fueling hoses themselves are actually they don't go up into the wing like they do on a commercial jet. I think the um, I think they're actually the, the the fueling points are perhaps uh, lower down, uh, sort of around about the area where um, uh, just around around where the undercarriage bay is, perhaps. Scott Tarpley indeed she does still look great uh, considering her age. Uh, Davina too. Um, pilot uh, Paul chocks away. Full of chocolate in any world, indeed. Um, just want to say a, a big shout out to all the uh, the local um, uh, security teams as well, who do keep passing me and giving me a wave. Um, I know they won't be watching because they're busy uh, running the airport, but uh, thank you so much uh, to them. Uh, David Cavanaugh staying overnight. No, it's not David. She's going out about 4.30. Um, wow, Andrew Foster, she was mothballed for eight years, apparently. That's incredible. Keith Cornell. Andrew Fly. Can't believe this thing came all the way over so he didn't wear a face mask. I think there's, uh, I think, who is it? One of the, uh, one of the airlines is going to paint one of their aircraft with a face mask, I believe. Uh, Okay, let's see whether we're going to get, um, right, okay, what I need to do now is I need to secure all of this because we do have a bit of rain. How long that's going to be here for, we don't know, but let's just uh, keep everything uh, dry there, keep it on that shot there. Um, got a little bit of uh, precipitation going on here right now, uh, let's just... Seven folks, uh, don't you worry about it. We've got some more action coming up. Of course, the uh, the jet's going out a little bit later on, and we've got a Boeing 747 freighter with cargo lux on its way in now. Kyle Thomas, if you can hear me, Kyle, uh, great to get that little text from you right, right, right now. Um, yes, indeed, she is a beast, my friend. Uh, thank you very much indeed. Good to see you, hope you're well. Oh, okay, there, make sure that stays safe. That is the three sim, right? Uh, Stephen Jackson, out at 16.30. Right, now let's just have a little look here. Uh, grab hold of Facebook, because I'm down to one device at the moment. Hope you're well, folks. Uh, just uh, have a look over there. That's something that we caught coming in earlier on as well. The um, Qatar Air Force um, 
C17 Globe Master. Good to see them in town as well. And a big bonus for all of you uh, aviation fans um, watching Big Jet TV live on a Sunday. Hope you're well. Looks like they've shut up shop as well. So that could be, uh, I don't know if they're planning to uh, stay here or if they're planning to go out again or what, I don't know. Um, one of our members uh, telling us that uh, apparently that uh, red nose right there delivered here to Presswick uh, last year. She hasn't one flown um, one single um, passenger flight since she was delivered here, um, which is a great shame. Uh, very sorry. Uh, I apologise to the uh, to the to the young chap who um, who who asked me to um, to film um, his friend's dad flying out uh, on the Ryanair 737. Uh, that was just at the wrong point. Unfortunately, um, we uh, we would have loved to have done it, but uh, but we uh, it, it was just at the point just at the point when we. Um, we obviously uh, needed to concentrate on the uh, the main subject of the day, which was the uh, 225. Okay, 747 inbound, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks to everybody for your great comments, really appreciate them. Thank you very much indeed. Welcome to all aviation fans and av geeks around the world. Uh, be, uh, it's an absolute honour to bring you this uh, here on Big Jet TV Live. And uh, thank you very much indeed. Ross Kennedy, um, Alfie Tate, take care. Jordan Hay, good afternoon to you. Um, tried to get down to sea today, but to work just too busy. Um, beautiful part of the world here at Prestwick it has to be said around Scotland um, even though it's a 450 mile six hour plus trip for me yesterday um, it's worth it uh, most definitely because it is uh, for all of us um, probably one of the uh, probably one of the only things that we haven't done I think the next I think the next bucket list is a rocket launch isn't it I think it's a rocket launch next year uh, should we go and do that <clears throat> Gordon Smith, good afternoon to you. Still got 11,500 people watching right now on Facebook. Um, great to see you guys all here. Uh, hope you're doing well. I don't think uh, there's any plan for that uh, globe uh, for that uh, globe master to leave. Uh, Let's just see if there's any crew on board flight deck. Crew. Yeah, yeah, there are crew there. I think. Or is that the seats? Just push the crew away, Jimmy. Oh, have they? Oh, okay. Okay, so they're not going anywhere. Yeah, there was a bus there, wasn't there? So uh, here comes a 747, folks. If you're if you're uh, feeling a little bit um, deprived of deprived of 747 um, action. Here comes one right now. All the way from Los Angeles. This is a four or an eight. <clears throat> Rob Hobbs, good afternoon to you. Elliot Reed, Il uh, Elaine, uh, Il Yvonne Healand, sorry. <clears throat> Gordon Smith, absolute pleasure. Claire Colville, Michaela Marshall. She's a 400. Any speckle? Uh, speckle? Special markings, or is she a uh, standard? Wouldn't it be great if it was the? Uh, wouldn't it be great if it was the retro, the new retro? No. X um, X um, Cargo Logic 747, which uh, was bought by um, Cargo Lux, has had a uh, fantastic retro paint job. Check it out, folks. Hit Google, Cargo Lux Retro Jumbo. I think these, uh, this particular jet powered by CF6 engines. Possibly got Gen uh, GE uh, engines on board. 
See how hard he puts it down. Freak dog. These Boeing 747 freighters are capable of uh, loading a uh, large engine like a GE90 in through the side uh, cargo door. Uh, very impressive. Don't specifically have to open it. Uh, use it. Use the node loads capability. What's that, GP? Just repeat. Just come down here. The shield. Just going to hang a right. Blanco. Uh, Blanco. Is it Blanco? Two people? Blancolio. Blancolio, no? Okay. Sorry. A jumbo jet action for a Sunday afternoon. Stop right there. Go on, stop right there. So, uh, what's the? Um, I mean, uh, the fuel delivery systems that they use on these uh, on these bows is pretty impressive. Uh, they can load um, fuel up real quick. I've been there when they filled up uh, Boeing 747 with 110 tons or 100 tons of fuel uh, for Atlanta. Uh, took them about 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Uh, Gordon Smith saying, if anyone around Glasgow is interested, there's a flight sim in Linwood, 737 version, uh, Accent Ave or Ascent Aviation. Uh, done it twice, great experience, fantastic. Uh, there you go, folks. Uh, Gordon Smith recommending, if anybody around uh, Glasgow is interested, there is a, uh, 7, 4, a 737 flight simulator with Ascent Aviation. Uh, check them out. They are in Linwood. L-I-N-W-O-O-D, mind you, why am I spelling that out? If you're in Gal Glasgow, you know where Linwood is. Um, uh, Jane Alder, I think you just missed that 747. You've only just joined. Um, rewind. Leading Edge Flight School at the airport. Also, they are, uh, they are class and have good sims, Ross Kennedy saying. Uh, thank you for that, Ross. 
Good afternoon, everybody. Watching uh, four and a half thousand people on the YouTube still. Uh, we've got a new member there, uh, Leslie De Beer. Um, Hello Leslie, hope you're well. Uh, if you are a new member and I've missed you folks uh, because of all the uh, hoo-ha with, uh, with, the, um, with, the, uh, with the connection just now, uh, please come in, say you're a new member and I'll give you a shout out. Um, Russell, oh, this, is, uh, this, is, um, this is our friend Russell in the United States for a rocket launch. I'm located at launch site in Florida. Plan a few days for delays and scrubs. Hey, let's go out and meet our good friend Russell. Um, in the United States, most definitely, because obviously they're still going ahead with the rocket launches. Um, I think, uh, did it make it back, the SpaceX uh, return module? Or is it is it coming back today? Oh, it's coming back today, okay. Uh, Carrie McLean, yeah. I mean, you know, Carrie, you say about how the fuel manages to get that plane off the ground, blah, blah, blah. But it is all a case of, you know, aerodynamics and how, how the dynamics of flight are. You know, once a plane uh, reaches a certain velocity, it will turn from, you know, the, 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 the pressure above and under the wing will um, increase and decrease uh, whichever way it might be uh, to, uh, to, to, to give that aircraft lift. So basically um, the pressure differentials under and above the wing, um, it is the wing that gives it flight. The, uh, the stabilizers at the back are exactly as they say. They're stabilized, keep the air aircraft stabilized in flight. And of course the directions uh, you, the, the, the rudders and the elevators at the back of the aircraft. All you need is a slight amount of elevation, uh, of movement on that elevator at the back uh, and the aircraft is airborne. But once the airflow starts to build up on the wing, uh, you, that's why you have a minimum takeoff speed, etc, etc. So, um, it, but again, I agree with you. It is uh, an incredible uh, sight to see and um, it is an amazing thing to see especially something like this and folks when this thing goes out you will be amazed because uh, when she when she goes past us uh, if she's got nothing on board if she's very light on board there's a good chance that she might be um, ripping it by the time she gets past us however it's highly likely that it'll look extremely slow as you if you watch big jet tv regularly from places like heathrow where they come past us on the uh, northern runway um, it does sometimes look stupidly slow and uh, you have to wonder how these things get off the ground but as the speed builds up um, the you know you can see the speed that they get to and they get up to that 140 160 knot speed uh, which basically uh, gives them takeoff capability <laughs> Uh, Jazzy John, is the AN-225 longer than a 747? Uh, yeah, I think so, than a 747-8. Um, I'm pretty damn sure it is. Uh, let's have a look. Kelvin Grant, good afternoon. Boom, there it is, military largest and queen of the skies. Cargo all in one, Big Jet TV. Thank you, and thank you, Kelvin. Yeah, I think um, I think the uh, I think the uh, 225 is uh, a good 40, 50 feet longer than a 747. Um, but have a look. Uh, Henny SA is a new member. Hello, Henny. Hope you're doing well, my friend. Um, Yes, uh, recipe three. Uh, already thought about it this morning with Dave, actually, uh, about getting a, uh, a round in at Troon. Um, well, obviously, Troon is, uh, what, a couple of hundred pound a round. Uh, but there are some great Parkland courses around here. And, um, and, and of course, next time, I've told, I promised Dave that I'm definitely going to bring the clubs uh, and we're going get to a, get a round in. Tony Austin, good afternoon to you. Uh, Scott Tarpley, quality mix of aircraft at Prestwick. I tell you what, I think we're just very, very fortunate that today, uh, apparently the Car Lux is pretty regular here at, at, uh, at, at Prestwick uh, because, like we've discussed, uh, there is a GE uh, facility not too far from here, which uh, obviously uh, maintains uh, General Electric engines 
that could be off of um, off of it. Gordon Smith. Is there another Gordon Smith here? Because I didn't mention Glasgow. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, Carl Mason. Good afternoon. New member. Uh, Debashmo, three hours to go apparently for the SpaceX. Uh, um, interesting, there's a set of steps uh, coming out. I don't know what that's for. I doubt very much it's for the, um, for the Antonov because again, they have their own set of steps. Not a lot of fuel, 40 tons, doesn't take a long time to fill and put 40, uh, 40 tons into one of these things. Uh, Martin Allen, due to splash down around about 8 p.m. Um, interesting though, I thought SpaceX was just all about uh, reusable modules, uh, so that they, um, so that they could. Uh, I think the the, the the launch craft itself was um, was the reusable part. Uh, then it detached uh, once it's in flight, uh, detaches whatever it is cargo it's carrying. Uh, let's just have a look here, see what, uh, why, what and why, the warp, we, warp. So, see, requesting some steps, I'd imagine. This thing is going to, uh, when this thing fires up, six engines uh, to start. And then she'll taxi right past us, head down the active runway. Um, and have to do a complete 180. inspection or something. One, uh, one fuel bales are done with. So that's the uh, port wing filled. Uh, should mean that the uh, starboard side should be done quite soon, I'd imagine. So where they... Uh, what I could hear. Yeah, or something. Says the citation. Oh, someone's asked for a shout out there. 
Uh, someone asked for a shout out. Uh, Eva, uh, Evo, sorry, is a new member. Good afternoon to you, Evo. Uh, Gaz Grill, loving the show. So true. Funny how it seems. Uh, there we go, look, Andrew Flyer, A225, A225 is about 30 feet longer than the 747. I wasn't far off, was I? I actually said I think it's about 30 feet longer, didn't I? That was a guess. It's not bad, is it? But yeah! Uh, set steps uh, was actually for an engine inspection. Seems a bit odd, but um, Airport webcams, thank you for sharing airport webcams, really appreciate your help now and all the uh, other times that you've shared our feeds, we thank you so much folks, check out airport webcams ladies and gentlemen, look at those crowds. Look at it. Woodall, good afternoon to you. Steve Partridge, uh, yes you have missed the big one, Steve, but uh, stay with us because you'll uh, you'll see her going out and that will be just as impressive. Here comes the other fuel bowser. Now we can have a close look at the undercarriage of this beast. Uh, by the looks of it, no, I don't need two uh, ground power units to fire it up. I think that GPU was just sitting over there for the sake of it. Um, just see if we can see a little bit of have a little bit of a sneaky peek as to what's going on there. Let's get a, get a bit of light on there. Come on, son. Come on, son. Fire it up, mate. It's just a little bit difficult with the. Bless you. Yeah, definitely an ending, engine inspection going on uh, with those steps that were called in. John Jacques Marsault, uh, welcome to Economy. Uh, Sailor Mike, the wingspan of this beast is almost 30 feet wider than a 380. Uh, AN225 is a 290 foot wingspan, almost the length of a 100 meter racing track. Can you believe that, ladies and gentlemen? So it would take the average person What's the um, what's the world's what's the world 100 meter record by old um, matey? You know, nine seconds. Nine seconds. So it take the nine seconds to run from one end of the wing to the other. Okay, here we go. This is to give you an idea of uh, sort of um, positioning. Oh, so Learjet 45, thank you very much indeed, Alistair Little. Learjet 45. JJ, welcome JJ. Ronda Jager. Bonjour. Jacques Cousteau, who remembers? Owned by Ryanair, eh? Oh, okay. Might be one of their execs. going up right by us, I think. Michael 
Hello, Lyria, right then. Here, my man. Nah, it's gone up, innit? Hey! Hey! Hey, hey! I love you, but... Ironically enough... Uh, the fella, Blakey... Shut up, Blakey! Uh, Blakey, the geezer, uh, who drove the bus on, on the buses, was either the first person to use the internet or the first person to use a mobile phone. Reg Varney. It was a card. Chip and pin. Yes. Right, there we go. Red <laughs> fine. Oh, <no. laughs> I didn't remember something like that, did Chip has his birthday tomorrow. How um Sam. Oh Sam Chipperfield, it's your birthday tomorrow. 30th tomorrow. Uh Sam, happy birthday for tomorrow. Uh world record for 100 meters is 9.58 seconds from Usain Bolt, Paul Rosser, thank you very much indeed. Uh, uh, Darren Emerton just watched the Cargill Up 747 on Rewind. Uh, very nice landing. Uh, the boot one, oh, sweet little jet. Daz Landles, Jilly and chance of getting, any chance of getting the clip where Jerry said hi to the downwind server aviation community on Discord. It was nearly 2,000 members and I'm sure a few would like to become members. Oh, it has nearly 2,000 members. Oh, well, there we go, um, Des, uh, or Daz even, sorry, my apologies. Um, a big shout out once again to all the folks, uh, downwind server aviation community. Uh, great to have you here, folks. And um, if, you're, uh, if you're on Big Jet TV, come in and say hello if you're a new member. Uh, Sco uh, Scooter Springsteen, there we go, first ATM. The first ATM, yeah. he used the uh, Reg Vardy. Uh, the first to use it. Wow, that's kind of crazy, isn't it? Um, an ATM Cali Monkey LAX. Yes, thank you, my friend. Wow, somebody out in LAX uh, knows that Reg Varney from On The Buses was, uh, was the first to use an ATM. Uh, that's a bit crazy, isn't it? Ernie Wise with the phone. Okay, B A H I Ernie Wise uh, with the mobile phone, I think. I think that might be the case. Um, uh, Char Council, I kind of agree with you there. Um, uh, I, as one, um, you know, agree with you there. Uh, James O'Brien. Oh, James O'Brien saying Michael O'Leary uh, normally flies on scheduled Ryanair flights, so fair play to him. Uh, maybe that, um, maybe that's just a private jet charter side of uh, Ryanair. Who knows? Um, what time did they say? Around about 4.30. So another 30 minutes, really, potentially, before this 225 goes out, folks, and it is going to be amazing. I think uh, I think the landing is an amazing thing to see. Don't get me wrong, but um, the, the takeoff is just out of this world. I mean, um, you will see a Boeing 747. Um, I think the nearest we've ever got to it was at Lakenheath, when we saw the C5 um, Galaxy going out, um, where he sat on the brakes for a very short moment of time, engines full thrust, uh, brakes on, brakes off. It was very, very quick, but you did see that aircraft lurch so much so that the front wheels literally came off the ground. Um, and that just goes to show the power. And we're only talking about four engines on the, uh, the C5 Galaxy, and believe it or not, four CFM 56 engines as well, which is just crazy to think that uh, the C5 Galaxy is powered by the same engines as powers an A320, <laughs> or an A318 even. Um, but, uh, but when this thing goes out, it is the most incredible thing to see, um, especially from this angle, because, you know, he'll light the engines up uh, to not to I, I don't think it's to full power it's just enough power uh, that he's happy with uh, that will give him uh, that velocity down the runway and uh, it is a bit of a it's a bit of an incline here as well going up this uh, this first section of the runway is actually up hill so uh, he obviously might have to count uh, counter that into the whole calculation um, but he will sit on the power for at least 30 seconds seems like an age but I think around about 30 seconds he'll sit on the power um, and you'll just see vast amount of exhaust coming out the back of the engines um, before he lets the brakes off 
uh, and lets the thing uh, go, basically. And then it will come past us at what appears to be a very low speed, probably around about 80, uh, 80 knots uh, by the time he reaches us. But um, he will use the full length of the runway, apparently so. But anyway, there those steps are being moved away now. So uh, I think that's, um, I think whatever it is they were use, uh, using that for has now been finished. And we'll, we'll hear, we'll certainly hear her once she uh, starts up her APU, uh, which is that little tiny little ground power unit there. It's like a little generator, basically. Um, uh, it just uh, enables the, uh, the, the, the little jet engine, well, it's probably not a very little jet engine, but the, uh, the auxiliary power unit that powers up the systems on board the aircraft, which will then uh, start the engines and then of course the engines uh, will be under their own steam um, and then the APU will be shut down. Chris Bain, yes we're looking at around about 25 minutes before this thing goes out. Lovely warm, uh, lovely and warm when that sun comes out isn't it? Eh? Another, tw another five degrees at least. Um, will the wheel brakes hold all that? Yes Steve, they will hold all that power. Look how many wheels she's got, Steve. Uh, all steering as well, I think, uh, on the um, the main undercarriage. Uh, the, the 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 body steering is. Uh, I think that's all steering on that main undercarriage. Is this guy doing a uh, a visual? Let's just have a look. Might be doing a visual or. Uh... Okay, okay, it's just my monitor's very dark. You can still see it. <laughs> yes, yeah, Sailor Mike. Oh, really? Loads of, loads of accounts with the Scottish flag on them. Brilliant, man. That's great. Hello to everybody in Scotland. We love Scotland, man. I, I, I tell you what, it is, uh, it's a great place to visit if you ever get the chance, ladies and gentlemen. APU starting up, here we go. Reginald Crud Stump. Um, not much going on at these uh, at the, uh, the factory. Kiev, I believe. Is it Kiev that, um, Kiev that um, was the um, assembly plant, manufacturing plant for the Antonov uh, 124 and 225? Uh, only one of these ever built, folks. See those uh, chocks have been um, have just been pulled. I think I think that's chocks. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, and uh, just go and have a little walk around. Perkins, been on the beach at Weymouth. Social distancing, of course, my friend. I love a bit of haggis. Got to say, I have had haggis before, and I do like a bit of haggis. Uh, it has to be cooked the right way, and there are different varieties, of course, with different, you know, additions and stuff like this. Bits and bobs, bits and bobs. But I do, uh, I do like a bit of haggis. With the right, um, 
well, I mean, it's like, you know, it's, the, it's the served up, you know, a Sunday lunch here in uh, the squad. Now going to be uh, there might be one more member of the personnel, seven man crew on board this aircraft, folks. So one will be a loadmaster, a flight engineer, um, pilots, um, technicians. Um, wow. So you're talking about, well, if there's a first officer and a captain, so then you've got your, and first, uh, and first, first officer, first officer, captain, flight engineer, um, uh, loadmaster, technician as well, uh, and a couple more, which would possibly be, well, no, uh, be, be semi-glass cockpit in there as well, will have been, um, uh, Uprated. Okay, looks like the uh, looks like this guy's um, Obviously, be a ground uh, operator who will uh, have a comms line uh, for when they start the engines. APU's been moved. Watch out for when they do a, uh, an F and F test on this beast, man. So we wait for the steps to uh, to be pulled up, but that will should be a um, a technician who will basically uh, be hooked up to the communication system. Normal procedure, anyway. Uh, let's just wait for him to uh, to make his way out. Oh, okay. GN man been a cracking week. Yes, indeed. It has been a cracking week. We were in, yeah, we were, we were in France this week, weren't we? It was this week, wasn't it? Yeah, flipping. Uh, JF Bryson said he got um, abuse for putting ketchup on haggis in the Highlands once. Well, you know, I mean, each to their own. I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I personally, um, I don't like any additions to a lot of the stuff that I eat. You know, when I, uh, 
when I have any, you know, rarely nowadays have a, have a, have a, you know, whopper of chips. I won't have any tomato ketchup on my chips because I can't think that it, uh, but, but everyone, it depends on, you know, depends on what, anyway, whatever. Um, Alan Ferguson, we're at Prestwick, my friend. Welcome to the feed, a little bit late, but uh, you're about to see uh, the most incredible thing you will ever see uh, in aviation. Uh, Richard Lowe didn't unload anything. She's um, she's heading to um, to France, uh, where, where she will then be going to Israel, um, Tel Aviv, um, and the the leg from um, Chateau Roux, which is oh hold on. The leg from Chateau Roux. If you're listening, uh, Chapman Freeborn, uh, we'd love to cover that for you one day. Uh, hopefully be doing some stuff with Chapman Freeborn in the future, uh, who have been quite heavily involved with the um, ex-Virgins 346s down in Bournemouth. My uncle used to go haggis shooting. <laughs> It's always fun, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Straight forward. Okay. Andy yeah. M. Oh, wow, yeah. Air France, seven triple seven, is it or seven eight seven? Seven eight seven, right. Just delivered in June, wow, she's brand new man. What's uh, what's her altitude? Thirty eight? She thirty eight? Wow. She's not streaming though, that's pretty cool. Like that. Yeah. Ain't she beauty? Okay, here we go. Come on, boys. And then I've only got a six hour drive home. Flip it, Nora. Wade, someone's going. Someone's going. Wade, you can't go now, man. Even if you just. Wow, Wade, come on, man. Stay up for a little bit low, late. I know it's Perth, Australia, and I know it's late. I'm sorry, Wade, but stay. Come on. I was going to have to watch the takeoff on the replay. Fair enough. What's this thing go up, mate? About 50 yards and it'll be airborne. Solo flight. Not a big fan of those ones, man. I've got to be honest with you. Come on, let's get these steps up. Uh, Joe Cameron, good afternoon to you. Good to see you in Scotland at last. There we go, Stephen Lusk.
Pigeons Aviation Travel. Sorry if I've missed anybody's comments today, by the way, folks. You know how it is. Um, it gets kind of crazy on here. Parish saying Amsterdam, France, Scotland, amazing. Where to next, Cherry? Um, home, uh, and uh, and then um, we'll just have to see. Um, interesting that the um, that the uh, runway operations are back to uh, dual operations at London Heathrow. Engine start slowly but surely. She's she's coming to life. It's alive! Yeah, it's a little uh, easy jet, isn't it? A little squeezy jet. Yeah. Toothpicks, yeah. Seven hours. Let's just see how long the uh, navigation active. Active A. Okay, 432 miles, 6 hours and 24 of Her Majesty's finest minutes. Right, we have a uh, comms operator. Yeah, he's... Uh, right next to Heathrow, Alan. Should be home. Here we go. <laughs> Joe Thompson. 
introducing my mum to the Antonov TV line. I'm going to be interested in the bank spotter's daughter. No nickname there, my van is very, very clean. All wrappers and everything gets, uh, doesn't look like the front of a builder's van. Would... No, not at all. Looks like the inside of a very clean, tidy car, actually. Yeah, still, the stairs are still down. Um, that is because the uh, the individual, uh, the technician who's uh, there on the ground, is uh, speaking with the um, air crew. Follow me vehicle is in place. going to be the most incredible departure you've ever seen ladies and gentlemen get ready for this free jilly the york one well that's my tea bird Ian McDermott hopes she flies on over Manchester on her way to France potentially that could be depends on just going out Possibly. Boot lad. Let's give the guys from there. Uh, it's alright, fellas. Luke Cook. 11 million packs of 10 mini rolls. <laughs> On board capability. We don't. Glad we could bring entertainment to you and everybody else. Mark Webber, Webster. Transponder is on, ladies and gentlemen. It's a nice going out of the middle for them. Again, a big thanks to all the uh, local security teams. Appreciate your. Uh, Looking after us. Darren Golding, uh, it's off to um, France, Chateau Rue, uh, where she will then uh, be loaded. Um, for her next leg to Tel Aviv. Oh, Albie, absolute pleasure, Albie, thank you. Flat test there. Well, 
is actually a ground spoiler check. Elevators. It's got to be the crowning glory of Big Jet TV so far. I mean, I know we've done a lot of things, but this uh, this takeoff is going to be epic. Oh yeah, Cargillac is, uh, is pushing back as well. How about that? Hey, hey! Yes, very possibly. That was a quick turn round. That may be what we're waiting for actually. But mind you, this uh, push and start is going to take at least another 10 minutes. Here we go. Don't forget she's got a taxi all the way down the active, I think. I mean, the uh, horizontal stabilizers alone are about the width of a Dreamliner wingspan, aren't they?
a new Queenie. Everyone wants a ringside seat. Car like 747 holding this position. Local security up on the mound. Even this Coast Guard, even the Coast Guarder, he's put it in auto hover. <laughs> he's put it in auto hover. get ourselves uh, lined up on the runway but uh, this will be amazing folks you'll be able to tell uh, is a, there's a possibility that you'll actually see the engines flexing on their pylons uh, the, the whole aircraft will shudder literally uh, my nephew has been on this aircraft when it goes out so he's, he's, wit he's been witness to it on the flight deck and the thing literally shakes.
बच्चे पे She was quite light because uh, her uh, spool up was, um, although she was sitting there on the blocks for quite some time, but um, let's just uh, let's just get this one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're the queen of the skies. <laughs> finish the day off, I think. Still trailing a lot of smoke, the old girl. Now this could go up very quick. Uh, I'm, I'm predicting that she's going to go up, uh, right, she's in the cloud now. Maria is in the cloud. I'm reckoning she's going to go up right opposite. Here we go. Thanks guys! Bye. Cheers! Hey? <laughs> we gotcha! Oh look at that man. Might get a bit of uh, fluff off of this one. Much uh, higher climb rate. She'll stay on that course now. Back to the US, isn't it? All oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Well, 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 ladies and gents. Um, now, what does that, what's that picture look like? Oh, mine, terrible. Um, okay, let's try it this way. Has it? That's better, isn't it? <laughs> hey, uh, there we go, folks. Well, what, what can we say, ladies and gentlemen? Thank you so much um, for joining us. Uh, glad we could bring that to you. Uh, Honoured, I have to say. And thank you to Antonov. Um, and uh, to everybody involved, thank you to all the security services. Thanks to Dave. Uh, 
um, and thanks to everybody here at Prestwick. Really enjoyed ourselves. Um, and uh, yeah, what can we say? Um, uh, another one ticked off for Big Jet TV, an exclusive here. And thank you to all uh, you guys and girls who are watching. If I missed your comments, I'm really sorry. I'll try and catch you on the next show. Um, you can always use the feedback form on the app as well, folks, if you want to give us feedback. Uh, more than welcome to do that. Uh, we're going to read out some, some stuff as much as I can on that as well. Um, and of course, uh, we will be live again this week coming on Wednesday. Where we'll be, we'll let you know, of course, like we always do. Um, it will be London Heathrow, more than likely. But um, until then, uh, we will see you on the next episode of Big Jet TV. Thank you once again so much. I've been Jerry Dyer, and you've been watching Big Jet TV live with the AN225 Maria. Uh, look out for more from Big Jet TV. See you later. Thanks, folks. Bye-bye.